Good evening, everyone. Tonight is Tuesday, October 16th, 2018. I'd like to call the Fitchburg City Council to order. Please be advised that FATV is conducting audio and video recording of this meeting for public broadcast. I would ask anyone else in the audience who is recording this meeting to please identify themselves by name uh, and address uh, by standing and saying such at this time. Seeing none, Councillor Clark, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please conduct the roll? President Kushmerick. Present. Councilor Boschman. Here. Councilor Clark. Here. Councilor Dantali. Here. Councilor Donnelly. Here. Councilor Fleming. Here. Councilor Green. Here. Councilor Caddy. Here. Councilor Squalia. Present. Councilor Walsh. Here. Councilor Zarella. Here. Public forum. Anyone wishing to speak on any matter on the agenda may do so for not more than two minutes. If you're addressing public hearing petitions, you'll have an opportunity to speak at that time. Please approach the center table and identify yourself by name and address for the record and the item number on the agenda which you are addressing. Does anyone wish to speak at this time? Representative Hay, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilors, I'm here to speak on 271-18. It's a resolution that's before you this evening. Um, I am here to speak on this. Um, the resolution talks about a um, amendment that myself and Representative Higgins has before the legislature regarding requiring medical centers um, and their essential services in the definition of essential services and tying that to um, community hospital reinvestment trust fund funding that they receive. Um, the representative and I, as every and everybody else in this room, and probably everybody else in um, the area and the Commonwealth, is a, is aware that community hospitals um, are cutting services and in moving them and in deleting them. And we'd like to have essential services have be more clearly defined and tied to the funding source that the state gives to community hospitals. And that's what this resolution does. Um, we would hope that you folks would uh, vote. To, to support the resolution because at the legislature, um, the more voices you have, the better off you are when you're making your argument and trying to get people to go along with you. So we appreciate the fact that the resolution is, is before you. We hope that you will, will pass it and we will use that in our discussions um, on Beacon Hill, trying to get the um, legislature to, to pass this to make it more difficult for community hospitals to, to close services. Um, and I think once you tie the funding to it, that, that is the piece that's important and, and may get their attention. So thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Hay. Does anyone else wish to speak at this time? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mark Rollo. I'm a resident in um, uh, Fitchburg, and I have my medical practice here. And I'm speaking to item 265-18, the uh, resolution pertaining to physician assisted suicide. I appreciate the opportunity just earlier to speak to the Legislative Affairs Committee about this. And I won't rehash all of that, but I would just uh, point out again that the, there are six communities in, in Massachusetts that voted in favor of physician-assisted suicide. They're wealthy communities, and it, I believe it disadvantages Fitchburg, who voted against physician-assisted suicide. If a physician-assisted suicide ever passes, we have a new medical procedure, and it is a cheap medical procedure. and people who can't afford care will be steered towards suicide. So I am asking, I realize there's no teeth in this resolution, but it is a good statement to say to the people of Fitchburg, we have your back. We don't want you to be steered towards suicide while wealthier communities have the opportunity to, to have another choice. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak during public forum at this time? Seeing none, if there are no objections, we'll now hear an oral report from the Appointments Committee, which met earlier this evening and took up the following three matters. Uh, all new appointments, the first to the Capital Improvements Commission uh, for Mr. Richard Saracen for a term to expire September 1st, 2021. Uh, for Ms. Lola 
uh, Heimala for the Fitchburg Cultural Council for a term to expire October 1st, 2021, and for Mr. Harold uh, Scheid of the uh, Board of Assessors for a term to expire January 1st, 2021. All three were adopted unanimously. Second. I have a motion and second um, to approve the Appointments Committee report. Speaking on the, on the motion. Assessors, I'd like to pull that. Because I'm not in favor of the Board of Assessors, I think they should be kept in house. Councilor, I have a motion and second on the floor. Uh, speaking on the motion. I'd like to pull the Board of Assessors. Councilor, uh, uh, the, the person who made the, uh, who made the motion has to uh, has to agree, uh, and we have so, no such new motion on the table. You may, however, speak to the, the motion. I'm not in favor of uh, finding out the assessor's position or out, outside. I said it from the very beginning. I was totally against it, and I still am. I voted against it the last time, and I want to vote against this position this time. I have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those in opposition? One in opposition, Councillor Boschman. Motion carries. Uh, communications from His Honor the Mayor. Um, appointments uh, first for Ms. Jacqueline A. Uh, Kramer as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Public Library for a term to expire October 1st, 2021. Uh, and then four letters of reappointment uh, for Mr. Glenn Fossa as a member of the Fitchburg License Commission. Uh, for term to expire April 1st, 2024. Ms. For Ms. Uh, Donna Pollock, as a member of the Fitchburg License Commission for a term to expire April 1st, 2024. Uh, for Mr. Chris Paquette, as a member of the Board of Assessors for a term to expire January 1st, 2022. And Ms. Jerry Milet, as a member of the Board of Assessors uh, for a term to expire January 1st, 2022. Those will all be sent to the Appointments Committee. Yeah. And we'll now hear a report from the Committee on Records. Councilor Donnelly. Thank you, Mr. President. We have reviewed the records and they appear to be in order. Motion to approve uh, the report. I have a motion and second to approve the report from the Committee on Records. Speaking on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. Council as a whole committee meeting. 3118, uh, the report be accepted. Second. I have a motion and second to accept the report from the council as a whole <coughs> committee meeting of October 9th, 2018. Speaking on the motion, Councilor Boshin. At the last council of the whole meeting, we had a debate on this, and I was against the 400,000 to the school department. I believe that um, the, city, the people of Fitchburg shouldn't be paying $300,000 for a mistake. There should have been fixed a long time ago. So I'm against $400,000 being allocated to the school because according to it's going to be used for expenses and it's costing us $300,000 out of the taxpayers for a $43,000 pot. Uh, speaking on the motion, Councillor Zarella. I'd just like to uh, address that briefly and note that regardless of whether it is a past mistake or is not regardless of how it came about it's still necessary at this point in time the alternative is to not adequately fund what our schools need and uh, i understand the desire to save the taxpayers money <coughs> but this is not a this is not something that we want to allowed a slide. This is something that is a direct service to the taxpayers, an essential service to the taxpayers. Um, people don't come to Fitchburg without schools. So. Councilor Dean Natale. $400,000 was triggered by Chapter 70 money increasing <clears throat> for the city of Fitchburg because the state budget was passed after ours passed. And as a result, net school spending requirements for the city of Fitchburg's public schools went up. The state mandated spending for our school district went up. So the $400,000 is what is required to meet net school spending. The city council has absolutely zero, I repeat, zero authority over how any dime of school money gets spent. That is a legal legal uh, 
uh, legislative effort done by the elected school committee members. We provide the school system $400,000. The school committee determines how best to use the $400,000 in the public schools. Uh, interim Superintendent Jokola stated to the committee last week that the majority of this money is going to school building needs that have already occurred in the high school and to special education programming. That is what he's proposing to the committee. The council has no say in it. But we do have to do our responsibility in funding the schools at the state required level, which this does. After that, it's with the school committee. Thank you. I have a motion in second. Uh, speaking on the motion, Councillor Donnelly. Thank you. I, th I think it's interesting. I, I can agree with what Councillor Dinatelli is saying, but there, uh, and also what Councillor Postman is saying. We don't have a say about where the money is going and how it's going, but we have heard questions of what happened this past winter. And when you have buildings that are occupied, if there's a problem, somebody will call you. If you have buildings that are unoccupied in extremely cold weather and pipes freeze and cause hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage and you have to shift students around, there are questions. And it seems like lots of people, lots of taxpayers have questions about why did that happen? Why has it happened more than one year? So it's not a question of holding the money up, but it is a question that people have of what are we doing to correct it. If you have empty buildings, especially in the cold, cold, extremely cold weather, maybe people should be paid to go through more often. So that's a question that I've heard, and I know others have. I'm going to support the money. But the, what's the forum that anybody has? They ask us what happened. And we, we don't have any forum to find out. We don't going to hold the money up, but we should be allowed to ask. Thank you. I have a motion and second on the floor to accept the report from the uh, report for uh, to adopt 231.18. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? One in opposition. Councilor Boschman. Motion carries. Finance Committee. Councilor Dean Itali. Finance Committee met last week and took up one item 263.17 in order that the city agrees to execute a revised pilot agreement with New England Solar Garden Company and Matthew Fournier as outlined in the enclosed order, it was adopted. I have a motion and second to approve the Finance Committee report. Speaking on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. Legislative Affairs Committee oral report. Councilor Walsh. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the uh, Committee on uh, Legislative Affairs met earlier this evening. Uh, there were three items before the committee. Uh, uh, petition 24618, Councilor Amy Green, on behalf of the Fitchburg Historical Society, to remove the deed restriction in place for said deed, book 2142, page 178, the uh -huh. parcel or parcels located at Grove Street and Vine Street. Uh, that was uh, approved 4 to 0. Um, I had to recuse myself from that um, petition. Um, 24718, Councilor Marcus Di Natale, to amend the city code where applicable by striking from it the $1,500 annual stipend paid to the chairperson of the Board of Assessors. Uh, that was um, voted 5 to 0, or unanimous to approve. Uh, petition 26518, Councilor Marisa Fleming, to request the City Council vote on a resolution pertaining to physician assisted suicide. Um, it was voted uh, five to zero, unanimous to approve a leave to withdraw the petition. I would I would ask that if the uh, the motion be made that it um, holds out two forty six eighteen as Councillor Green and myself both have um, a conflict of interest. Hold out two forty six eighteen, approve two forty seven two six. Second. Okay, speaking on the motion, Councillor Fleming. Uh, um, two sixty five eighteen. Can we take that separate? Because if, if, if I'm voting to approve the report, and I don't approve all of the report, I don't want to vote. Sure. Uh, so I have a motion and second to approve uh, 247.18. Speaking on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Uh, it is a unanimous motion carries. Approve 265.18. Second. I have a motion and second to approve 265.18. Speaking on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. All those in opposition, one in opposition, Councillor Fleming. 
24618, uh, Councillor Walsh uh, and Councillor Green are recused uh, due to conflict of interest. We'll just give them a moment to step outside. Move 24618, accept the committee's report. Second. I have a motion and second to accept the committee's report on 24618. Speaking on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. Orders, finance. 26618 through 27018, be sent to the finance committee. I have a motion and second to send uh, 26618 up to and including 27018 uh, to the finance committee. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. Resolution. You have the entire text for the. What's that? I'll read the entire thing. Uh, next, we have resolution 27118. Be it resolved that the Fitchburg City Council is resolute in its support of the amendment uh, to H4617 proposed by Representatives Hay and Higgins that requires medical centers to maintain essential health services as defined in 105 CMR 130.020 <laughs> in order to apply for community hospital reinvestment trust fund funding, also known as chart funding whereas essential health services have been discontinued at an alarming rate in neighboring communities and across the Commonwealth, including the 2010 closure of the 15-bed psychiatric unit at Burbank Hospital, the 2012 closure of a medical detox unit at Brigham and Women's Faulkner Hospital, and the recent <coughs> UMass Memorial Health Alliance shuttering of a pediatric services at uh, hospitals Lemonster campus, and whereas in many instances, uh, where the Department of Public Health held a public hearing and determined that these services were considered essential services and should not be eliminated, leaving many without reliable health care, and whereas the elimination of these services has a profoundly negative impact on the care of patients in these communities and puts further strain on our health care system. As reason, therefore, the Fitchburg City Council finds that it is imperative to support the proposed amendment to H4617 by Representatives Hay and Higgins to add a condition for any hospital applying for chart funding as established by the Massachusetts Legislature this past year to maintain essential health services as defined in 105 CMR 130.12. I have a motion and second to approve 17118. Uh, speaking on the motion, uh, councillors, uh, I submitted this, uh, uh, Representative uh, Hay spoke earlier. Uh, the number one reason is really uh, that, you know, we've seen uh, multiple times in our region where services have been deemed essential. Uh, we elicit tremendous, you know, um, outpouring of support from our community, um, and the DPH uh, records all of this in their findings uh, only to determine that something is essential. And it really has no teeth. There's, uh, you know, what, what Health Alliance has done, I find to be unconscionable and, you know, immoral in terms of what they've done and, uh, for providing uh, access to affordable um, uh, medical care to our region. But it's, not, it's certainly not illegal. Um, and uh, as such, they, they really then can move forward with whichever course um, of action they so choose, regardless of what the state uh, DPH has decided. Uh, this would allow for um, chart funding to be tied to that. If they choose to override the determination of essential services, they would no longer be eligible for particular kinds of state funding um, to their agency. Uh, I think this is uh, crucial, particularly as we, we could see that any number of um, medical um, uh, treatment facilities across our region and across the Commonwealth um, could continue to close. I, I think it's, it's easy to see there's a trend he happening here, uh, and Fitchburg has been disproportionately affected more than any other community to date. Uh, I think it's important for us to pass this resolution and to support uh, Representatives Hay and Higgins, because particularly as they go to these committees and as they go um, through the legislature, and I'm sure our mayor can speak to this much more fluently than I, um, but you know, ultimately these resolutions need to have the backing of the constituents. And as House leadership and committee leadership try to move amendments through and see which ones have support, representatives are often, you know, forced um, by <coughs> leadership one way or another um, to, to drop something or, or to move forward. 
I think this allows Representatives Hay and Higgins uh, to bring this bill to Boston, this amendment to Boston, and say that they have a constituency backing them that expect them to move this forward. And if they don't, that they're disappointing not only this body but but the city as well. Uh, so I'm hoping that this provides them some of the ammunition they need uh, and the backing that they need in Boston to say we're with them and we're with what they're trying to do uh, and fully supporting uh, and resolute in our support um, of the amendment that they filed. Uh, and hopefully that helps them uh, move that amendment forward as the bill uh, moves through, uh, towards uh, ultimate adoption. That said, I have uh, speaking to the motion, Councillor Zarella. Thank you. Um, I just want to make two points here. One is this is the logical continuation of the resolution the Council already took, uh, I want to say about a month ago or so, uh, when the closings were first happening. Uh, this is a matter that directly affects the entire city and that, as Councillor Di Natale said during our committee meeting, uh, the citizens have no voice in this unless we give it to them. Um, there's not going to be a ballot initiative. There's not going to be anything of that nature. And yet, we do have these toothless designations where citizens of Fitchburg are being disproportionately disadvantaged. And it's particularly by a, an organization that is theoretically chartered to serve the community. If this were a private hospital that said this is our money our shareholders want us to do this whatever i'm a pro business guy if, if that's what your bottom line requires fine but if you're getting funding and tax breaks and whatnot from the community to serve the community you better be doing that um i'd also like to briefly draw a distinction between this resolution and the one that we gave leave to withdraw earlier uh, both are very worthy causes. The distinction here is that this is a pending matter before the state, and there is no citizen input other than here. Uh, it's not a hypothetical question that may come up. It's a live question before the state legislature and our representatives uh, are asking us to give more oomph to their efforts. Uh, I think we should be doing that. Um, I would like to see us have more options the next time a closing cycle rolls through. Councillor Squalia. So the goal of this resolution is to increase the ability of the legislature to um, have more power and authority over the, the DPH um, or not or over hospitals in conjunction with the DPH to withhold funds from the chart fund from the, the chart is that sounds correct it, this would in essence uh, this amendment is asking for when a DPH uh, when DPH rules something as essential uh, the organization applying for chart <coughs> funding a specific type of funding um, would be ineligible for that if they choose to override the ruling of essential services and close a service anyways. Thank you. Councillor Walsh. Um, I just wanted to uh, echo what uh, Councillor Zarella said. I think it was well said, and I think he hit all of the, the uh, points that I was going to make. So I'm, I'm in full agreement with uh, Councillor Zarella's statement. Councillor Di Natale. I personally have a lot of misgivings with H4617 as a whole. I understand this resolution only involves the amendment. My concern is if these hospitals, and they are private still, because clearly the government doesn't have any control over their decision making, what this amendment is going to potentially do, and this is a concern I have, is if they want to close facilities that the DPH deems is essential and they do it anyway and they apply for chart funding I agree there should be some ramifications for wanting money that involves a community grant when they're not servicing 
the needs of the community as DPH has outlined. However, there is no evidence to suggest that they won't just then turn around and whatever money they don't get from the state, they're going to charge the consumers. So I am concerned that the hospitals are going to get their money one way or another. They're just going to pass the cost down to their consumer base, and we don't have a very prosperous community in terms of median household income. So this is one of those resolutions where I feel like for me personally, I'm damned if I do and damned if I don't. I have I voted for the resolution wholeheartedly a few months a few weeks ago about condemning the closures, um, but I'm looking at this and I'm concerned that if the hospital does not get the money, they will just pass it on to the to the to the payers to the to the consumers, and I don't want to. I'm concerned that that will take place. I don't have any firm evidence that will, but my concern is they'll get their money one way or another. And if they're not going to get it from the state, they're going to get it from the people that use the services. So that is my concern in supporting this. Thank you. Matter is before the body. Motion to accept uh, resolution 271.18. Second. I have a motion and second to accept 271.18. Speaking to the motion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those in opposition? Two in opposition, Councilors Donnelly and Dean Natale. Motion carries. Uh, petitions 272.18 through 275.18 be sent to the respective committees. Second. Second. I have a motion and, uh, Councilor Dean Natale, you? Yes. yes. Fine. Okay. Yep. I have a motion and second to send 272 up to and including 274.18 to their respective committees. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. Motion to accept 275.18. Second. Uh, we, motion. we need suspension of the rules in that, yeah. correct? He wants to approve it. Correct. No, I'm sorry, I don't want to approve it. Okay. I just wanted to hold it out so I could speak on it. So, so motion to send it to move to send 275.18 to Public Safety Committee. Yes. Second. Okay. So I have a motion and second to send 275.18 uh, to the Public Safety Committee. Donald J. Cordio, DBA, Performance Auto Annex uh, at 1022 Main Street, Fitchburg, to reinstate the automobile dealer's license as the conditions required uh, by the Fitchburg City Council and the building department have been met as outlined in the enclosed petition. And that was uh, recommended to go to public safety. Speaking on the motion, Councilor so, Caddy. Two weeks ago, this was uh, before us uh, in another form. And I made a comment that our lot is a mess. And nothing has changed since two weeks ago. Could we send him another notice telling him that I will personally try to hold up his class two dealer's license if he doesn't get that lot cleaned up? It looks like there's contamination on the left side of the building, tires. It looks like there were some vats of oil. And it's been sitting there since the, the uh, lot closest to the, to the rotary uh, has debris all over it, over near the uh, river. There's also debris that's going down the banking into the river. So, Councillor um, Councilor Caddy, you'd be requesting that before this petition um, appear on a public safety agenda, you'd like to see those items remedied. Yes. Okay, we can send that communication to both um, Councillor uh, Green uh, as chair of the Public Safety Committee as well as the petitioner. Um, speaking on the motion, Councillor Boschman. I just want to tell the people that there was an auction a couple of days ago, and Mr. Cordio does not own the property anymore. He gets sold. At a public auction, Councilor Donnelly was there too. Am I right, Councilor? So we don't. He does not own the land any longer. Okay. Uh, Councilor Donnelly. Thank you. Um, at the suggestion of the Economic Development Office, um, acting as the chair of the Redevelopment Authority, we were authorized to go and bid on the property. Um, there were a number of people that did bid on the property. Uh, someone actually bought the note, and they continued with the auction anyway. Um, I've had three phone calls from some individual that wants to know if we're still interested. But it's over the amount we were allowed, and <coughs> so Mr. Cordio does have the right to apply. You don't have to own the property to have a license. But whoever owns the property has to bring it up to some standards, and hopefully uh, some of the standards will be raised substantially so that something, oh, some, when people enter Fitchburg, they may not see a used car lot there. There could be something much 
more beneficial to Main Street. And um, there are other unanswered questions, so um, I don't even think there will have answers if you schedule this meeting shortly. It's going to be a while. So I, I think we can send such a letter that, that encapsulates the concerns expressed already um, to the, the relevant parties, uh, and in the meantime, uh, we'll work with Councillor Green um, to schedule that at the appropriate time. Councillor Dina Talley. I, I know this is going to go to committee, but I'm, after hearing all of this, if the man does not own the property but he can still get the license, we're going to take this up at a future time not knowing who the private property owner is? Because Cordio can just say, I'm not going to clean it up. It's not my property anymore. I mean, I sent it to committee. I just don't. It's confusing to me. What, he's applying for a dealer's license, and what's further confusing, it says all the conditions by the city council and the building department have been met. They have? Councilor Caddy just said it's a disaster over there. What, what conditions did they meet, did he meet, that didn't involve cleaning up the property? Councilor, that's exactly why I think we should send it to committee. I, ultimately, I mean, be, you know, uh, because we, we could continue to debate exactly what the committee would be I looking think, for. It's uh, just, just confusing to me, that's all. It's, I mean, it'll be, in, as Councilor Dolly said, it sounds like it's going to be in committee for quite a while, so someone better let Mr. Cordio know that. <laughs> I... I, I realize we have a couple other counselors. Are you amenable to sending this to committee and uh, counselors? Okay. Mm -hmm. I, have a, um, do I have a motion and second to send this to uh, the Public Safety Committee. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. Motion to we'll adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, counselors. Thank you.